spirits of my ancestors. They're with me constantly. And if it had not been for their strength, I would not be standing here this morning. In a few days' time, I'll be 79 years old. I'm often referred to as one of the stolen generation. <coughs> I was taken away from my family here in Carlton in 1939. I've had no formal education. And uh, the age of, by the age of 12, I was a hustler and a rent boy. I would like to take you back. Before I mention what the strategy means to me, I've seen many, many changes to the LGBTI community throughout my lifelong years. There has never been a more momentous change than this, nor a more significant one. But I'd like to remind you of what it was like for me growing up in Melbourne. 62 years ago, I was arrested at a party in South Melbourne, taken to the local police station, beaten up, charged with the abominable crime of buggery for which the death penalty was on the statutes and sent to Pentridge Jail to await sentencing. Then, a year later, came the news that shocked the world. A young American GI named George Jorgensen went to Denmark, had the first sex change operation and returned to America as Miss Christine Jorgensen. In, 19, in June 1969, I was beaten up by the police in Christopher Street during the Stonewall Ride. In fact, I still have the scar. We linked arms, we marched down Christopher Street, and we chanted, gay power, gay power. Four days later, the rise of gay liberation, the gay liberation movement came about. In 1981, my lover of 17 years was the, one of the first men to die from HIV AIDS in London. With the help of a young New Zealand psychologist, I then set up the first AIDS training clinic in, at St Mary's Hospital in London to help to dispel the myths that were surrounding the virus. You know, during all those years of being out there, I never once dreamt that I would return to Australia and be standing here in Melbourne congratulating the government of Australia for finally recognizing LGBTI people as human beings. Like many other Australian minority groups, we need special care as we get older. I recently had an experience in the Royal Melbourne Hospital that could have been embarrassing to anybody else. Uh, I was diagnosed with a rare cancer, and because of the nature of my cancer, I had a long discussion with my doctor, Professor Ian Jones, about my sexuality and about my life. It is now thought that I was, well, I was sexually abused by a drunken uncle at the age of four, and it is thought that that's when the cancer began. One morning, uh, Professor Jones asked me if he could bring a number of his young doctors and students to ask me questions. So they came into my ward. This was a public ward with six other male patients and one female. The students stood around the bed, and one young doctor said, I've been reading your medical file and you're homosexual. <laughs> he said, I think we should take blood and test you for HIV. So I gave some blood. Later on that day, the same young doctor came back and whispered, you're negative. <laughs> so at the top of my voice, I said, young man, not all gay men are HIV positive and certainly not gay men of my generation. Well, this new strategy will address that infringement of cultural insensitivity. 
and for that I am eternally grateful. On behalf of the wider community, I would like to thank Akon, Corey Earlham, my good friend Dr. Joe Harrison, and all those people that took time to fill in the many questionnaires that were sent out. I don't know everyone by name. And most of all, I would like to thank the member, the Honourable Mark Butler, for ensuring that all members of the LGBTI community will receive sensitive care as they get older. Thank you very much.